Well, hi there. I've got this piece cut out now. It literally taken me like 10 minutes. I just whizzed around it on the bandsaw and then used my belt sander just carefully around the edge um, to get it to the right shape. And I think that, uh, you know, it was worth waiting for the aluminium aluminium because I think it looks a lot nicer uh, than the plastic or anything what I want to do next is I want to um, I want to sand a chamfer round the edge a nice sharp chamfer all around and I'll use my belt sander uh, which is just over yonder um, and uh, yeah, it'll be a fairly easy job and watch me do it a bit if you like. So make sure you chamfer the right side and not the back. So I'll just do that bit just to show you there, you know, you get a nice nice sharp edged chamfer sort of thing. I'm not going to take it right down to the bottom so I've got a square edge on the bottom and then a chamfer around there so now I'll, I'll just get on and do the rest around around this part and around this part. If you're butting up to another pit guard or something um, you know be careful that you leave you know you, you, you don't want to chamfer all the edges sort of thing but in this case this is a standalone plate so it'll look nice with chamfers all round so I'll get that done well here we go um, here's the start of the the control panel it really hasn't taken me long it's on, on, on honestly only taken me probably about half an hour 20 minutes to get it that far the edges are still a bit rough but aluminium is very soft and easy to easy to, to uh, sand and stuff anyway so um, no problems there with finishing it off but I'd like to get the holes drilled in and everything like that um, the problem is I haven't got the switch yet through the post but um, the switch is going to have to go up up in the top um, The switch is going to have to go up in the top corner here, really, um, I don't think practically it would be sensible anywhere else. Um, so the knobs are going to have to go, you know, the knobs are going to have to go here, I think, somewhere here and here. You want a bit of distance between them that you don't clatter into them. And then the switch up here sort of thing. So I'm hoping it will all fit. The, 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 problem I've got is that the um, jack socket sticks into the body quite a long way so um, for the knobs you know I'd, uh, yeah, okay I could put one in the corner there and I could put one here but they're far too close together they're, they're far too close together there um, so I'm going to have to fit a knob in there, which fortunately the pot does fit there, which is okay. And then I can put another knob like here, which gets a sensible distance between them. And then there's room, hopefully, for the switch in here. Um, it's all getting a bit tight. Um, but, oh well. And... So this pot really can only go in, you know, it's tight, it's a, it's not, you know, you don't have to squash it in or anything. Um, and there's also a, um, I think you can see it, there's this thing on the jack socket, but that is only a, like a cable holder. You put the cable in it and then you crimp it round. It's not. It's not anything to do with an electric contact, so I can get rid of that. And then, like I say, the pot pot does fit in there, but the problem is I haven't got much freedom um, of where I drill the hole to mount it. So um, 
you know, I can only move the pot like about an eighth of an inch each way, slide it back a little bit. So what I'll probably actually do is use the yellow plastic um, uh, thing that I've sprayed silver, the yellow plastic thing, and I'll actually like mount the pots on that to make sure I get them in the right place and then transfer those holes over to the um, to the aluminium piece so um, we don't make any cock ups on that so here we go so let's get planning what I'd also like to do as well is on this I mean it's quite plain looking and uh, um, I know it'll have the knobs on it and things like that and whatnot, but I might scribe like a border around it that would be quite easy to do. Um, you know, I can just use this basically. Um, where's the the aluminium sheet that I? Uh, well, here's a bit of aluminium here. Just template for the tail piece um, you know if I just put this on the edge and drag it along now I can scribe a line and I think I can do that you know around this quite successfully just to just to give it a bit of bit of you know decoration but anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to get on with trying to drill out these pots and um, holes for these pots, and uh, we'll see how it all goes. Um, it's going to be quite difficult to work out how the hell to do it, but um, we'll have a go. Okay, I'll get back to you. Well, hi there. I've. Um, marked and drilled where these pots are going and now um, just on the on the pattern control plate so they fit quite nicely um, there's a nice gap between them which I like and there'll be enough room up there for a switch um, somewhere somewhere like that the switch will go this is a shame this switch I don't know what's wrong with it, but well, it's obviously been sitting there rusting for a while. But um, you know, the switch will go there, which will give me give me you know enough room. Um, so you know, hopefully it will be all right when I finally get the switch. Bit not bit annoying not having it, but what I can do now is remove the pots from here and and transfer the holes into into the aluminium plate um, like I say with these guitars I'm trying to trying to use all the gear I've gathered over the years and and that have never made it on guitars so um, I mean these are good quality pots but never they've obviously been taken off something and uh, <clears throat> never use but I can I can now put that on there and drill through the pot hole so at least we'll have that sorted so we'll get that done I'm gonna drill the, the pots are quite a quite a tight fit through those holes so I'm gonna drill a slightly bigger bigger holes which will give me a little bit more wiggle room and uh, yeah that will be good let's get that done well, okay, I've done a bit to the control plate. I decided I didn't like the the kind of brushed finish on it. So I sanded it with um, uh, 1000 and 2000 grit. It's kind of brought it up to that kind of low, low sheen, which I actually quite like. And if you can see, I've just scribed those lines around the border of it sort of thing. They're not too accurate, but they're not too bad. Um, and I actually, you know, when I'm putting it on the guitar, I actually quite like it at that kind of shine level that it's not too blingy sort of thing. I mean, I could obviously carry on polishing it, but 
I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to leave it like that for now and um, see what it, uh, you know, see what it looks like when it's all together, sort of thing. I mean, you've obviously got the chrome pickups here, which maybe in retrospect would have been better with um, nickel covers, but I don't know. I, I quite like the, the mishmash of um, shininess, sort of thing. Um, so yeah I'm kind of happy with it I think I'm happy with the way it looks now um, I'll have to drill some holes in here for mounting screws for it but that would be fairly easy um, yeah so uh, hopefully it will continue to go right I'm sure it will I mean that's the last major bit we've got strap buttons to put on um, another polish of this resin I think um, and then um, we'll be looking at stringing up and making it functional, which will be quite good. Looking forward to that. And it's another time for a cup of coffee, I think. Well, hi there. Welcome back to 3R Guitars. And I think you can see um, in the background here, uh, the guitar's looking pretty much um, finished. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm waiting, still waiting for the bloody pickup switch, which uh, doesn't seem to be anywhere near getting here yet, which is a bit disappointing. So, um, the control panel now, um, it's kind of on there and, you know, with the knobs as they are, the lacquer set on them okay. I think they look really sci-fi, sort of UFO looking. Um, which is nice. So we've got a switch to go on there, obviously. Um, and I'm wondering whether to put some kind of planet thing in there. Um, don't know yet. But we've got strings on, and you can see the string path is like really good. Uh, the way up. Everything. I mean, this is the third one we've built. I mean, there's a little way to go yet got a bit more finishing to do on the, the sides and stuff. I did paint over those areas where there was a bit of white showing at the junction between the, the resin and the wood. Um, but yeah, it went together like a glove really, to be honest. There's the headstock now. So I think that looks pretty cool. You're looking forward, to, I haven't done the wiring yet, obviously, because I haven't got the switch but not much to do now and this is just basically thrown the strings on done a very you know um, very rough cut of the top nut so there's still a little way to go there but um, just to get it all done sort of thing and I've still got slots to cut in the um, in the uh, bridge saddles and I think the neck angle is about perfect because we've got almost zero action now and by the time I cut some little slots in the saddles it's going to be on the fret so these necks amazing value really I think they're very very good um, you know no severe I, mean, I, I went over the frets and I sewn them flat and went over them with a fret rocker just to check that things were were reasonable, you know, and they are very good. Amazing necks for the price. Um, so, yeah, so looking like a guitar. So there we go. When you've built three of them, you kind of get used to putting them together a little bit. But um, it's going to, like I say, I'm going to put a bit more oil on the edge, gun oil on the edges here um, but my whole intention with these was to never you know refinish the the wood that was on there just leave it as it is it's it's it is what it is it's an old table and I want it to want it to show its heritage as it were so yeah we're all good and um, wait now get that switch and um, then we can do something with this con this control panel, um, you know, finish it off, give it another polish and whatnot. Um, but all looking good. Thank you very much. Oh, hi there, and welcome back to Three R Guitars. Ta-da! Actually received it today, the cranked 
uh, three position um, pickup switch, which is really good. I did contact the seller. Um, I bought it off a music shop on eBay, um, Maple Leaf Music with a K. Um, bloke replied to me absolutely immediately, apologised profusely, and said it was sent out. And but he's sending me another one. But hey, presto! Today I get the uh, probably got the um, the original one finally. But um, what I can do is buy another one from him but he cut no need to send it but he's very kind on the phone so and on, on the, by messaging very quick so no complaints there just a postal thing i'm sure um so we'll get this mounted now um i must admit that um you know the switch is gonna go um somewhere in there you know hopefully i've got enough room i'm sure i have um, it's going to be tight, but um, I must admit that this little plate I made, this plastic plate, which is obviously the, the aluminium um, control plate, was made from. Um, I must admit, it, uh, I might do this more in future when I do um, when I do these plates. Just make a pattern, and then you know you can get everything dead right. So what I'll do is I'll screw some um, other pots in here put the switch on and then you know you can get the hole exactly in the right place and muck about with it a little bit and then do it once on here instead of putting it in there and thinking oh I wish it was just a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch different and you know anyway let's get um, let's get these screws out Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention as well was, do you remember me like saying that um, I felt with this uh, um, resin that, that there seemed to be a sort of a slight haziness to it? Um, I've been, I've probably polished this more than any of the other ones, and um, it's certainly, you know, it's it's looking it's looking really great now, you know. And I'm not sure whether the, the haze I'm imagining seeing in the, in the resin is actually just an optical illusion. It's because the top is not like perfect. Then I'm looking, and it's probably some refractive quality. Because where, where I've actually gone nuts with the polishing, I mean, I started normally, like, you know, I use this um, car polishing compound and and then you know I, I I normally just like rub it on and you know give it a quick quick like sort of rub over then wipe it off and what I started actually doing was really pressing hard and rubbing you know just to see what would happen and really pressing hard and rubbing and you know it got better and better and better and you know, I'm looking at this bit now, especially where I did a lot of, a lot of like hard rubbing on it, sort of thing. It's absolutely crystal clear. There's no haze underneath there, so it's definitely that I'm too lazy polishing, basically. But now I think you can see on there that it's really looking really good now. So I'll apologise for sort of saying it's. Uh, the glass cast stuff with the fault but it really does you know I can see here where I haven't polished so much I can still see that haze and, and it seems to be below the surface but when I look at this bit that I've polished really hard I can't see that haze at all so it's definitely just a case of me being a lazy bastard and not putting elbow grease in to get it like uh, polished up but you know, I'm really, really happy with that now. I think it just looks bloody fantastic. Um, so anyway, let's get back to this switch and uh, see where we go. So I'll just stick a couple of pots in there to get weave in and then try and position the, the switch and we go from there. Good, good. Ah, oh, hi there. We've got the the hole drilled now for the, for the switch and um, fits in like perfectly there and um, 
I would say these step drills, um, I mean I bought this one I think from Screw Fix for about 10, 10 quid, something like that. They're bloody fantastic for doing large diameter holes. You know, if you try and put a 12 mil drill through that, um, you know, you, 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 you'd have to, you know, obviously drill a pilot hole first and even then it would be wobbling around and you'd get a massive burr on the back and just, just, just an unpleasant procedure really. This thing, because it just drills its own pilot hole and just go, it's per absolutely perfect. So I would invest in one of those if you plan on doing any larger diameter holes. Um, so what I can do now is uh, I'll put this in. I don't know, I mean this is a very small um, control cavity in here um, and you know, you, however you do it you'll, you, you'll always be struggling a little bit with, uh, with axis and room and I probably should have cut down these wires, um, pick up wires a bit more to make them shorter and things but to be honest I, I don't like doing that because the shorter you make the wires you know you need to be able to like pull the plate and turn it upside down if you've got short wires you're always straining stuff and whatnot and you know it, so it makes life more difficult for you because you're trying to solder with it at an angle and things like that and so it's a double-edged sword really I, 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 just make sure everything is insulated because as you cram it all in the last thing you want is like an earth wire um, an earth wire pressing against a, another, you know, a switch contact or something like that, and then you end up with it not working, which is very frustrating. But um, so yeah, it, it really, I'm, just, I'm I'm dealing with a with a, a control cavity that is barely big enough. Um, but again, you could use mini mini potentiometers, but. I don't like them so much, uh, I don't know, um, they can, they fail easier, they seem to, and a bit less robust, so I do like to try and use, you know, decent like CTS potentiometers and stuff like that, or the Alpha Pots, I've never had any problems with and half the price of CTS, but I'd, if, if I can at all, I try and use the full size ones. Um, having said that, with the mini pots, I can't remember having a problem with any of them. It's just a feeling, you know, bigger, better sort of thing. But anyway, let's get on and, 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 and get this junk in then. Um, right, here we go then. I've got the wiring done. Um, I mean, I had a really boring, like... Uh, probably like blooming 15 minutes of video on the last build about wiring a guitar but um, the, 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 the rules that I work to basically I'm, I'm, I'm no expert with wiring and um, like I said in the last one I'm um, I'm convinced it's nothing to do with electrons it's all to do with smoke and if you can keep the smoke in the wires everything works um, but like here you can see on the on this lead here that I cocked up a little bit. It's the it's the lead from the from the pickup, the hot wire from the pickup, and I wanted to connect it to the switch um, over here. But because the switch is quite long, um, <clears throat> you know, I hadn't left enough lead. So when I'm joining leads, I say so I always solder them, but I also put shrink sleeve in around them so they, they're insulated properly um, the other thing is is that when I put earth leads in a lot of people that like you see bare earth leads like um, and <clears throat> I don't quite like that I like insulated earth earth leads because again when you when you push the especially a small plate like this when you push it in it only takes you know 
one of the earth leads to be pushed against a contact on a potentiometer or something and you'll get a really khaki um, contact and it, sometimes it'll you know it'll work sometimes it won't depending on the mood of how the wire bends sort of thing um, another really good bit of kit is is this uh, simple meter and basically the only thing I use it for is is, is on ohms and what that basically tests is whether something is connected or not connected. You either get zero or you get one if it's not connected. So you get zero resistance if you know, you're know just connecting one end of a wire to another. And that's useful particularly with these um, pickup switches because you can, you, know, you can flick the switch backwards. You know the output from the switch is the center contact there. So you can put one of these probes on the center contact and then swap between the other two contacts, see which one is connected. So if the switch is back, right, that's the bridge pickup. So wherever you get continuity or a connection, wherever your meter goes to zero, that's the contact you put the pickup on. So it's very handy, very, very handy tool, and they're only cheap, they really are cheap. So it's well worth having one of those. Um, so yeah, I think we're all connected up now, and um you know i didn't forget to put uh, an earth lead to the back of the switch which i put into the tone pot there no problems um again um what was i going to say um oh i think i was just going to go over yeah having an insulated earth lead sort of thing so that should all be fine now um <clears throat> let's see if it fits i mean there's a lot of looks like a lot of junk in there but uh, and there is but let's see how we go oh, we must have a, yeah we've got a pesky lead there and there I think that should be it yep we're all in the screws now and Check that you're not pinching a lead anywhere. So, uh, yes, I am. There's a little red lead there. Oh, that looks good. Okay, then I'll get this sorted out and get back to you. Well, hi there. Um, <clears throat> see I've got this little amp down to test the guitar now here is an incredibly um, common thing um, now you saw the care I took with all the insulation and everything on this guitar um, on the wiring making sure that like everything was like you know there were no bare wires going to touch something and look what happens right okay I've got the the <clears throat> control plate partially off. Now we're on the front pickup. Middle pickup. Those work. Back pickup. Front pickup and fine. Right. Put it in. Back pickup still working. Nothing. Let it up again. It works. Even after all the care I took with making sure that wires, so there's obviously a wire that's being squashed somewhere and touching something. Um, you know, a bit frustrating, but you know. So let's have a look. Honestly, can't see anything in there that could be causing that to. It's a 
amazing. Anyway, I shall have a look and then investigate and find out exactly what's causing that. And I'll get back to you and we'll give the guitar a test run. Well, here we go. Um, sorted that switch out. Very simple in the end. Like I say, just a wire pushing on something. But just to give you an idea of the sounds from it. Um, we've got the bass pickup or the neck pickup. sound um, something in the middle quite nice and the back pickup sound which I think is quite nice. Um, so it's a bit more rocky in the sound sort of thing um, a bit more of a, a, a rocky sound with a bit more um, gain on the amp not gain just volume something like that if I could get remember the solo but you get the idea of the sounds from it and I hope it I don't know whether I'll put this in the video see, 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 see what it comes out like but um, this amp as well is really lovely little things it's, it's a copy of a Fender Champ made by a local guy all valve and everything like that lovely little thing so if anybody's interested drop me a drop me a mail and that's just straight through nothing no, no pedals, no, 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 no faffing about. So, um, yeah, I guess um, you know. Let's switch this off anyway. Um, so I guess we, we're uh, oh, we're we finished with this now. So that's that guitar complete. I've got the uh, um, intonation to set, but a minor thing. But I think uh, yeah, it's um, really come out well. Again, a um, lot of like uh, um, voyages of discovery with it. A lot of um, you know unique pieces on it that you won't get on anything else. Um, as about I do a flyby of it now, and um, 
we'll uh, I'll just talk th through it a little bit. So here we are then, this is number three in the resin top body guitars. Um, totally original design. Um, so let's just do a flyby of it. Um, you can see obviously the main feature is the resin top on the body. Um, and you can see that the um, you know there's there's raised pieces basically I cut out um, <clears throat> cut out the posters and duplicated them with some bits raised up by about five mil um, so they're all my favorite 50s 50s sci-fi films we've got the Forbidden Planet, War of the Worlds, Day the Earth Stood Still, The Time Machine. Um, one of my favourites I really like, uh, When Worlds Collide, um, This Island Earth, I love that. Um, that's the This Island Earth spaceship, as, uh, no sorry, that's the When Worlds Collide spaceship there as well. Um, so we've got like a very 3D effect on the um, posters they pop out at you a bit one bit I really like is um, these flying saucer knobs which I cast from silicon moulds I made um, aluminium switch there uh, control plate um, aluminium tail piece which are meant to be two like comets with their tails crossing that's unique to this guitar um, a tone pros bridge um, these are blues engine iron gear pickups modified with the with the feet of the pickups bent the other way round and I'll show you how they adjust they adjust with four screws from the back um, well two in each pickup from the back so there's no ugly pickup rings or anything um, so going up the neck all pretty standard stuff the neck was a purchased neck um, paddle headstock and here we go um, the headstock here obviously rocket shaped um, uh, with with this inlay I've done which is meant to be flames from the rocket sort of thing so there's the whole thing um, mini mini shallow tuners which are very nice uh, very simple um, three-way switch nothing fancy in the electrics let's have a look at the back now now obviously um, you know if you've been following the bills this was wood I was given it was a Victorian table and I have no intention of sanding it down and refinishing that that's just how it came um, these here are the pickup height adjustment screws so if you just imagine a humbucker pickup with the legs bent the other way those four screws and they work beautifully we've got the unique um, V inlaid neck plate which is five millimeter brass um, standard neck stuff and all that um, mini shallows and uh, just zoom out and we'll be all done and that's the kitty there so if anybody is interested please get in contact unique guitar obviously um, and number three goodness knows what number four is going to be like because I've only got one bit of wood left to do these with so there we go lovely thank you